46 Crazy Music Facts Everyone Should Know. In 2014, English YouTube star Zoella uploaded a picture to Instagram of a random man and his dog on the beach. The random man was Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmour. The lead singer of the 90s band The Goo Goo Dolls, John Rzeznik, invented his own guitar tunings for many of the band's biggest hits. He taught himself guitar as a kid and turned the knobs until something sounded good. Macho Man Randy Savage released a full-length rap album in 2005, and the title track Be A Man is a diss track towards Hulk Hogan. The Elton John song called The Bit Back has backing vocals by Dusty Springfield, and John Lennon did hand clapping and played tambourine. The line, haven't you people ever heard of closing the goddamn door in Panic at the Discos, I Write Sins Not Tragedies, came from the lead singer Brendan Urie's dad after he walked in on his son having s the main instrumental sample in Tupac's California Love is from a Joe Cocker song called Woman to Woman. The song also samples West Coast Pop Lock by Ronnie Hudson and of course Dance Floor by Zap. John Bonham's iconic drum sound on the Led Zeppelin version of When the Levee Breaks was achieved by placing his drums in the stairwell of Headley Grange, a Victorian house in Hampshire, England. The echo created a massive thundering sound. Kenny Rogers was once singing at a private event of a hedge fund manager and asked to repeat the gambler's over and over, being offered additional pay per song. After a dozen times and having earned $4 million, he refused to sing. American singer-songwriter Nancy Sinatra, daughter of Frank Sinatra, posed nude for Playboy in 1995 at the age of 54. Ariana Grande had the words his small charcoal grill tattooed on her hand in Japanese instead of her song's Evan Rings due to missing characters. Members of Right Said Fred are credited as songwriters of Taylor Swift's Look What You Made Me Do, for its interpolation of the melody from I'm Too Sexy. Following Michael Jackson's death, his sister discovered two hard discs at her brother's home that contained more than 100 unreleased songs, many of which were unregistered. In 2010, Sony signed a deal with Jackson's estate to release 10 posthumous albums, but only three were ever released. Beck rejected Weird Al's request to parody his 1990s hit song, Loser, because Beck felt he already wasn't being taken seriously as an artist. Later, though, Beck regretted this decision, saying it would have been an amazing video, and he was really sad it didn't happen. Song titles can't be copyrighted. You can legally title a song Bohemian Rhapsody, Stairway to Heaven, Smells Like Teen Spirit, or any other already used song title. During a rap beef, Jay-Z wrote a diss song against Nas, describing him having an affair with Nas' girlfriend. Jay-Z's mom was disgusted with her son's behavior, and made him apologize to Nas and his family. The Crosby, Stills, and Nash song, Just a Song Before I Go, was written on a dare by their limo driver that they couldn't write a song before getting to the airport. It went on to become one of their biggest hits. The first streaming music service started in 1897. Users in New York could pick up their phones and connect to the Telharmonium, a central hub that would pipe music being played live by two musicians playing 24 hours a day. The song I'll Be Missing You by P. Diddy was a huge success spending 11 weeks at number one. P. Diddy did not secure rights to the song, so Sting sued and owns 100% of the royalties until 2053. Just in time for Diddy's release, George Michael worked on his song Careless Whisper for two and a half years before finally releasing it. He went through eight saxophonists before finally settling on Steve Gregory, who was able to play the riff exactly as Michael heard it in his head. The song topped charts in 10 countries. Just two of Dolly Parton's songs, Jolene and 9 to 5, gross about $6 million to $8 million per year in royalties. In 2002, Chumbawamba accepted $100,000 from General Motors for the rights to use one of their songs in a Pontiac commercial. The band then donated it to a corporate watchdog group that used the money to launch an information campaign against GM. Dictator Muammar Gaddafi had a strange obsession with U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. He had Libya's most famous composer write her a song called Black Flower in the White House. A photo album full of pictures of her was also found next to his bed by opposition fighters. The song Gasolina by Daddy Yankee was selected by the Library of Congress for preservation in the United States National Recording Registry as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. The most sampled song in the world is the 1969 song Amen Brother by the Winstons. A seven-second drum break known as the Amen Break has been used in thousands of songs including songs by The Prodigy, Pendulum, NWA, and Slipknot. In 1965, the FBI began an investigation 
information to determine whether the lyrics of the popular song, Louie Louie, were obscene. After 31 months of research, they concluded that the lyrics could not be considered obscene because nobody could understand them. Classical music and metal fans have the most similar personalities. Based on a study of 36,000 people in more than 60 countries, both have the same basic motivation, to hear something dramatic and theatrical, a shared love of the grandiose. The song Fight for Your Right by the Beastie Boys was written as a parody of frat culture, and the band was upset that people took it at face value. After the trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6 was released, its featured song, Tom Petty's Love is a Long Road, saw a near 37,000% increase in Spotify streams, had almost 250,000 searches on Shazam, and ranked second on the worldwide iTunes chart. All of My Love by Led Zeppelin was written as a tribute to Robert Plant's son Carrick, who died of a stomach infection in 1977 when he was five. Plant did the vocals in one take. There's a musical instrument from Newfoundland, Canada called the Ugly Stick that is usually made from a mop handle, beer caps, an empty can, and an old boot. When hit with a stick or stomped on the ground, it resembles the sounds of a drum set. On July 3rd in 1973, David Bowie ended the Ziggy Stardust persona and practically fired the Spiders from Mars on stage at their final performance in London's Hammersmith Odeon. To the fans and band's disbelief, Bowie announced that not only is it the last show of the tour, but it's the last show we'll ever do. Hootie and the Blowfish had to pay $350,000 to Bob Dylan for using Tangled Up in Blue and Idiot Wind as lyrics in their tune, Only Wanna Be With You. When Ray Davies of the Kinks took his first driving test, he ran a woman over. When he got out to help her, he forgot to put the handbrake on and the car rolled over her shopping. The adult video news media network once ranked Def Leppard's 1988 hit, Pour Some Sugar On Me, as the number one song played while strippers are disrobing. Kurt Cobain was wearing three pairs of pants when he died. After David Lee Roth left Van Halen, Eddie offered the lead singer position to Patti Smith of Scandal. She declined. He then offered it to Daryl Hall, who also declined. Finally, Eddie was introduced to Sammy Hagar via their mutual Ferrari mechanic, and he accepted the position. Elvis Presley craved the fool's gold loaf, which consists of a hollowed out loaf of French bread filled with one one pound jars each of creamy peanut and grape jelly and a pound of fried bacon. It packs 8,000 calories. He and friends once flew from Memphis to Denver to eat 30 of them. The song Yankee Doodle was used by British soldiers before the Revolutionary War to mock American soldiers, stereotyping them as rural simpletons who would think putting a feather in their caps would make them macaroni, i.e. cool, but was later used by Americans as an anthem of defiance. 